Hello everyone and welcome back to Cause Streams TV. As always, I'll be your host today. I am Cause and we're taking a look at a busy week 12 that we just had in season 4 of Dragonflight. We ended up doing a lot more than we expected. We did some beta, we did a lot of retail keys on multiple characters, we played some mop remix and we were helping people out. We even helped our friend over at Wowaholics 101 Silk get his 2KIO for his mount that he did not have yet. It has been a busy week. So let's kind of jump right into it. We're going to start off by actually taking a look at the Death Knight. Now, he can't actually get any more gear upgrades, right? Unless I do his belt and a couple other pieces, which I guess technically we should upgrade because we do have the aspects for it. So maybe that's what we'll do at the start of this week is upgrade some of his remaining pieces, which it looks like is just his belt up to 528. And from there, he will be completely maxed out unless he gets some new pieces in his vault. But the cool thing about the DK, let's talk about this for a second. We ended up doing a lot of keys on the Death Knight. We we're helping some people out. And surprisingly enough, yep, you guessed that we actually ended up getting some IO. For those of you who are wondering why it still shows last week 12 affixes because i'm recording this video just before the reset and i'm going to get the vault done right away so let's take a look at what the dk did we did we ended up getting seven points in mythic plus so we went from 2563 to 2570 we got three points from an aa we got three points from doing a nine algathar academy we got one point from doing a nine ruby life bulls and we've got three points from doing a nine Uldaman legacy of tear not a lot of points but I was not expecting to get any IO on this guy, so hey, I'll take it, even if it is a little bit. All right, and let's take a look at what we get in the Death Knight's Vault. We are opening it in on Holy Spec, as always, and today we are looking at... Ooh, lots of items, lots of items. We have Mythic Track, 519 we two-hander, we don't need. We have the 522 head, we don't need. We also have the Transmog for both. We have 519 weapon once again we also have this transmog moving into our mythic track we've got mythic track feet crit verse this is a good upgrade it's the same legs we same feet we have now and this is a very good upgrade we have 519 waste mythic track which we already have much better stats though haste verse and then also the 519 legs which we have the mythic track tier i think i'm going to take these feet because it is an upgrade into mythic track of the exact same feet i already have so we're taking these feet. Great. DK finally saw an upgrade, and we can upgrade these right up to 404 Mythic, and we'll do that right after this. And after upgrading the feet, we go from 526.81 up to 527.63. Fantastic upgrade on the DK. The plan on the DK this week will be to continue to do keys, right? He is maxed out, but hey, it's still a lot of fun to do some keys on the DK. I have considered maybe doing some higher keys, getting the remaining portals he does not have but we'll see it is the end of the season and we'll also be bringing him to our Farak mount farm with the guild so you can expect to see him a little more on thursday when i'm streaming and that's the plan for the death knight we're going to continue doing the same thing we've done for most weeks and we're just going to play him because he is a lot of fun and next up we're going to talk about a character i spent a lot of time playing this week and i've had a blast going from tanking to dpsing is the same one i was playing last week and we're talking about the retribution Paladin. I decided to put a little effort into this guy and see if I can get him up past that 500 eye level mark. And well, guess what we did? We have a ton of gear upgrades to talk about on the Retribution Paladin today. So let's just kind of jump right into it. He started at 482 item level this week. Yep, that's right. We were 482 item level. And I decided to do a couple things with him just to kind of get started. First of all, we upgraded his head to a to an LFR tier piece. As you can see, we have a normal champion track tier piece. That's because we ended up getting a normal helm earlier in the tier that was just sitting in our bag. The reason I got the LFR is because I had the token, so I figured I might as well use it to get that. On top of that, we ended up getting, we catalyzed the chess piece, the hero track that we had, and that gave us a tier. We ended up running, uh, we like I said, we did a bunch of keys on him, so we'll talk, we'll talk about that in a minute, but we ended up running some eights, and we got a hero track neck piece, which replaced a, norm, a champion track, 
So that was a huge upgrade. And on top of that, I was like, you know what? Let's let's jump into the raid a little bit. Let's let's do the raid. Let's see what we kind of if we can get any gear out of there. And I got so incredibly lucky. We ended up getting two trinkets from the raid. We got the 493 branch, which replaced our 467 last season's branch. And then we also got the coiled serpent idol which replaced the other extremely low trinket we had. But because we did the raid, we got a ton of booleans on, on the paladin. So we ended up actually going out and picking up Signet Brand and our pocket anvil. And not only that, we were able to upgrade both of these pieces from 493 up to 519 for the anvil and 509 for the Signet Brand. So significant upgrades there. On top of that, with us being able to do some eight keys, we were able to upgrade Ashkander up to 12 out of 12, which was a massive DPS increase. Circling back to that raid that we were doing, we also ended up, ended up being traded Champion Track Shoulders, which was a huge, got huge upgrade, and we were able to catalyze that. These shoulders replaced 473 last season shoulders. We replaced a 457 ring with the Band of Burning Thorns at 499, a 42 item level upgrade. And then we also got the headpiece from the raid, which, I like I said, replaced the LFR 486 that we had. On top of that, we only needed Igira to actually get the head enchants. We were able to finish that quest get the head enchant as well so the so the paladin continues to just get upgraded and upgraded and then lastly we also got hero track wrists that replaced 457 wrists so 506 wrists replaced 457 another massive upgrade so the paladin went from 482 to 502 item level that is a 20 item level jump for him this week it felt really good to play him and with that let's take a look at some of the keys that he ended up completing this week and there's a little bit to go through here so we as a dp had no keys completed minus the eight rlp we had on tyrannical we didn't do any keys on the paladin so the majority of his score comes from the fortified dps keys that we did this week and as you can see this was basically blank when we started and we've got some keys now so what did we complete we got an eight no kudo offensive we have an eight ruby life pools this ruby life pools gave us 75 points we got an 8 Brackenhide Hollow. We had an 8 Ultimate of Tear completed. We have a 7 Null Theris. This Null Theris, because we have nothing for Tyrannical, ended up giving us 212 points. Massive jump in our IO. And then we have a 5 Halls of Infusion. Again, that was 97 points. And then a 3 Azure Vault. And that's where we finished the week. He's up to 1897, which if you just look at his DPS only... It is 1586.2. So some of his IO, 300 IO still comes from tank keys, which will mainly be on Tyrannical Week, which I will fix this week. But the majority of his DPS all comes from the fork keys, and he is 1586. That feels pretty good on the Paladin. All right, let's open the Paladin's Vault. I'm really hoping for Mythic Track Legs or Mythic Track Hands so we can catalyze those for the tier. Let's see what we get. We're opening in Retribution. Let's hope for the best. And the verdict is... All right, so we've got some normal pieces to take a quick look at. We've got normal legs. This is a significant upgrade, so we may take that because we can catalyze it. We've got the chest. We're not going to take that. We have tier track hero. We also have the head, which we're also not going to take. We already have a champion head we catalyzed last week. All right, for our mythic pieces, we have the 519 mythic track ring. Crit haste. Huge upgrade there. We have a Crit Haste Cloak at 519. And then we have the Hero Track Tear. As much as I would love to take these Mythic Track pieces, because they are a nice upgrade to have, I think we're going to take the Tear Legs, because this is exactly what we wanted in our massive upgrade over what we have today. And with these legs, we go up to 505.25, and realistically, we now have our four piece on the Paladin. And for the Paladin this week, I have been very much enjoying playing a DPS class. So I do plan on playing him a lot more this week. I'm hoping to get him well past the 2k IO mark. And I want to get his item level up to at least 520 this week. Maybe even 522. Let's see if we can do another 20 item levels this week. So that would be the goal for the Paladin. That's the plan for him. He has been a lot of fun. I don't think he really needs much else outside of maybe just getting gear upgrades and maybe some Mythic Track gear if we're lucky. So I'm looking forward to pushing more on him and getting some more keys done on Tyrannic this week 
And something we talked about last week is running our alts. So I did do a warrior key. So he will have one vault slot available to him. We're opening it in arms. Let's see what we get on the warrior. Oh, sad, sad on the warrior. We got 509 hero track waste, but we do have the crafted belt, which we will keep because that is something we would upgrade. So sockets it is. And surprise, surprise, yep, we did one key on the monk. We ran a 10 helping someone get their portal for no coup, so he will have one mythic track vault. And it looks like we've got the haste verse, haste mastery neck, which we already have our best in slot. We are just going to take the sockets on him as well. In some mop related news, like I mentioned at the start of the video, we were actually doing some raids and some dailies and helping people actually just get stuff done. We actually jumped into a Mythic Siege of Orgrimmar to help a friend get his achievements. And it turns out I was missing one boss for my Paladin, so I never actually had the full achievement. So we ended up getting that done on the DK. We ended up running a world, world tour with a couple people, and we just kind of poked around and helped. I didn't really go hard into Mop Remix this week when it came to my max level characters. However, we did end up falling into the trap of playing a lot of alts and creating more alts. As I mentioned last week, if you remember, I had the Shammy I created. He's only level 26, still not ready to open the mailbox, so he's on hold for now. I will continue playing him, of course. But I ended up making a whole bunch of new characters, and we'll start off, a, they're all on Stormrage because they're Alliance. We made a Draenei Monk. I absolutely love the Draenei model, so a lot of my characters will always be Draenei. So we have a Draenei Monk, if I ever use this character, I figure it will be a healer, so I called in the cause mist. We have cause tree rage. I believe this character already existed, and I was like, ah, I don't need to level another druid. But then I thought, why not level another druid? He's just sitting there, and it'll be quick. So we did that. We made a warrior cause Aknar. We made him look like Ragnar from the Vikings. Unfortunately, he has a helmet on, so I'm kind of disappointed with that. But we have him at level 18, and then we also started cause Witcher, a brand new death knight that I'm going to be also leveling. So that's four new alts just on Storm rage alone that we're going to get up to max level and i most likely want to do another alt another couple alts on hydral i was thinking maybe a mage get a mage on there and some other dps class maybe i'll play down the road i was thinking also a hunter i kind of like the vault would love to have a vault or a hunter because they're just so cute so i'm thinking of doing that all right, and you guys all remember my cause light paladin that I made last week. Well, he's level 32 right now, and I think this is going to be a new record for when he can open his mailbox. So originally he was level 31. I did one more daily, which actually pushed me over that 32 mark. He was able to open it at level 31, but here we go. We are level 32 and we're going to blast right up to level 70. Another successful character breaks the sound barrier, hits level 70, and just another one that I get to do more mount farms on when this switches over to retail characters. So super excited there. <clears throat> couple characters now done and of course we're going to talk about some more mop remix stuff here in a second because i did do some more casual stuff i was actually helping people level and do some raids and there it is level 70 we made it to the end at 172 island level we are level 70 on the paladin so even though it doesn't seem like we did a lot last week, we really did because on top of doing all of these alts, helping all of these people out in Mop Remix, doing so many retail keys, last week we were fortunate enough to get some beta testing done and we had the mythic rate testing going on. We got to try four new bosses, Brew Twister, Ovenax, Rashinon on the first day, and then we also got to try my two favorite bosses, the Silken Court and Pr Princess Caveza. There'll be a link in the description below to all of my beta videos check them out i think the bosses are gonna be fantastic i made videos last week you can check those out it was so much fun doing those bosses we didn't get far because it's mythic we were scaled to 610 and the bosses dropped 623 plus eye level gear but it was so much fun actually doing these bosses i can't wait to try them in live i think the war within is coming in hot and it's going to be a fantastic expansion and let's take a quick recap on what the plan is for this 
week we are of course as i mentioned going to continue to play retail it looks like i'm going to be playing a lot more retail because i'm not really pushing characters in mob remix right now so we're going to be working on the death knight obviously we're just going to keep doing keys with him getting the aspect crest upgrading whatever we have left we are going to push the ret paladin up a bit i want to get his io well up over 2k i want to get his item level up to 522 so he's a little more ready and then we're going to be doing the weekly raid with the guild and doing a bunch of streaming thursday we're going to have our our stream there won't be raids so we'll just do a laid back stream doing some keys and we most likely once again won't be streaming on sunday mainly because the great push is on and i will be watching that anyway so i don't really feel like it's necessary to stream since most people are going to be seeing watching the thp anyway so i won't be streaming on sunday we'll continue to put get, we'll continue to level our mop remix characters do the dailies as always it doesn't take long and then of our under rod adventures for the mount will continue because i still don't have that mount even though i ran it on all of my alts last week so that will continue in other news outside of world of warcraft we have family now visiting from europe and we're going to be going to canada's wonderland it is a music amusement park here in canada similar to six flags down in the united states we're doing that wednesday this week and then i am really looking forward to as i mentioned earlier the great push i i'm cheering for my boys that miscount i hope they win they they put on a clinic last week so i am looking to, forward to that anyway i hope the vaults have been good to you i hope you enjoy everything that you're doing in the game and i hope life is good until the next one peace out everybody